I must say that uh, why I'm wanting to introduce this way because it really, uh, I feel at home when all the Vihasa experts uh, render their uh, sharings on this platform. And uh, I have shared last time a few things about uh, Sister Maureen, but let me just, because there are quite a few new people, Sister Maureen, so I'll just give a little bit of introduction about you. So Sister Maureen has been instrumental in the services of Global Cooperation House in London uh, since almost more than 40 years now. And uh, for nearly last 20 years, from 1991, she's overseeing the works, uh, the, the work of Brahma Kumaris at GCH, and she has contributed to all these value-based workshops in prisoners, and also uh, conducted a lot of residential seminars, the topic being spiritual, spirituality in prison. So she's contributed a lot in the service field with a lot of prisoners. She's also uh, conducted talks about respect, it's about time. That initiative which was launched by the Royal Highness of Prince of Wales, and it helped in bringing young people together in Britain's various faith interfaith communities. And all of you know that she is, I had told last time as well, that she is on the board of the religious leaders of the Elijah Interfaith Institute and the Peace Pledge to Live Loving Kindness and Compassion. I had told that. And uh, lastly, uh, Didi, uh, Sister, sorry, I'm saying Didi, I'm having the privilege to say Didi. So Sister uh, Maureen, also in 2017, she was she presented on something called the Ethical Dimension at the Clim Climate Change Conference in Bonn. So she's got a lot of service opportunities to her credit. But one thing which I must say, when you look at her, the cheerfulness radiates from her. Last time she uh, shared with us on responsibility, but I think today it will be much more. She is an embodiment of cheerfulness. So with this, I'll just stop my sharing and uh, over to Sister Maureen. Thank you. And thank you for joining at 5.30. I know it's 5.30 at UK. Thanks once again. Yeah. <clears throat> That's okay. So let's just have a moment of silence together. Thank you. And Om Shanti. And uh, thank you very much for welcoming me again. And uh, yes, it may be early, but even when it's early, we can be cheerful, right? <laughs> um, actually, I was quite struck by this last question about um, when you're faced with suffering with death and how do you remain cheerful and uh, I just relate a, an experience that um, one of our sisters a very close friend uh, was going through cancer um, she passed away I think in 1997 and uh, I was with her through the journey so going to hospital appointments with her and you know, sort of helping with her welfare and everything. And uh, of course, we knew that it was terminal. Um, what was interesting was that that was the time I learned that healing is not necessarily about healing in a physical sense. Um, because I watched over that last period how she healed all her relationships with her family, with friends, with others. And then I understood that the soul needed that healing before passing on. But I remember um, one point sitting there with her and in my mind just asking God, what's the best thing that I can do for her? And the answer I got was stay happy. 
Now, you may think someone's dying of cancer, you stay happy. <laughs> it's not happy that they're dying, of course, um, but happy in the sense that what she needed around her was an atmosphere of happiness to make that passage easy. She didn't need an atmosphere of, oh, I'm sorry, oh, what's happened? No, she needed the atmosphere of happiness. And it wasn't so easy at first, but then, yes, I knew this is the right thing. And um, it was a very beautiful experience, actually. And so she left in a very, very beautiful yogi way with a lot of silence. So just wanted to relate that and in a way reinforce what was being said. Um, but this uh, uh, theme of being cheerful, uh, I was just thinking that if you want to really see a cheerful face, then you want to look at the deities of the devtas and don't their faces look beautiful? <laughs> their eyes, their, they may not be smiling in a broad sense, but they just look so happy from the inside. And you look at those faces and you feel uplifted. And as has been said, cheerfulness is something certainly that comes from the inside. It isn't just something that's external or superficial. And uh, to be cheerful, I mean, in today's world and as has been expressed, um, there's just so much. One is the suffering. And I think something that causes a lot of suffering is on a mental level is the uncertainty that there is around us at the moment. And, um, you know, here in the UK, tomorrow is the day that all the legal restrictions of COVID are being lifted and the emphasis is being put on personal responsibility. And um, we're getting very mixed messages from the government. On the one hand, yes, no legal restrictions anymore. On the other hand, cases are going up. There's going to be more cases. Be careful, be cautious. It's actually not just uncertain, it's quite confusing for people. Um, so in a way, the government putting the onus back on the people. Well, if you're not careful, this is the result. And, you know, how to stay cheerful in the middle of all of that. Um, yes, if we are yogis, if we um, have that connection with God, with the divine, then, of course, we're able to put everything on, on that divine being and feel safe with that. Not everyone can do that, but also, even if you're a yogi, you can't do that all the time. There are times when you get influenced, you get affected. And also, it's important that you know how to help others through your happiness, through your cheerfulness. And um, I know that this morning, shortly after this session, I'll be going into our big morning class in London and there'll be, well, our numbers are restricted at the moment because of social distancing. So there'll be probably about 140 people present, but there'll be probably up to 300 watching on the webcast. And uh, I have to make the announcements about how we're opening up for tomorrow for with COVID and, and what we're putting in place. And so I know that if I said, oh, tomorrow we'll do this, and I look very sad, well, everybody would say, we don't want to come to Global Cooperation House. <laughs> but if I um, make those announcements with happiness, with a cheerful face, people will say, yes, this is good, and let us come, we're going to be safe, it'll be fine. And just to reassure you, and not just throwing the doors open and saying back to normal, taking it very, very gradually, because people need to feel safe, and we need to be safe. Anyway, so your cheerfulness goes a long way. And, um, you know, even, uh, you know, people recognize that this state of cheerfulness is something that 
can be very beneficial and that can do a lot. And, you know, if you have a cheerful personality, um, sometimes the term is used a sunny personality. You know, it, there are people, aren't there, that when they come into the room and they smile, um, you feel the sunshine has come. I used to feel that about our former head of the Brahma Kumari, Daddy Prakashmani, and her smile was so wonderful. And I would always say to her, Daddy, when you come in the room and smile, it's like the sun comes up, the sun rises. And I really, really felt that. And uh, so, yes, this sunny personality that just uplifts the atmosphere in such a, a natural and beautiful way. Um, if you were to tell people, be happy, well, they may or they may not. But if you smile and you bring that atmosphere of cheerfulness, naturally people feel happier in themselves because you've lifted and you've lightened the atmosphere. And where there's cheerfulness, um, lightening the atmosphere is one thing, um, but also you're able to make friends a lot more easily. Um, when somebody's cheerful and a little outgoing, then yes, I can talk to people, I can find a way of making a connection, and uh, that goes a long way too, because we all need friends in life. And uh, it's important to feel that we're surrounded by friends. Um, and also, I always feel when you're more cheerful, um, it will help you to relax. Your mind is not so preoccupied with the heaviness of life. And you can be more relaxed in situations. Um, I just saw a cartoon just before coming. It was quite funny. And it said, well, when you're worried, it helps to sit down and think about things. And in the cartoon was a big dog sitting on top of a little dog. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that you have to squash your problems or you have to squash the people that you don't like or don't get on with. But to sit and think about things and to really understand, if my mind is cheerful and my mind is light, I'll be able to see many more things, have many more insights than if I have a heavy mind. A mind that's heavy with worry just can't see a way out of problems, just can't see how to resolve the problems. And even if somebody says to you, look, it's very easy, just do this and this. You say, no, but you don't understand, you know, your mind is heavy, you can't even accept the good advice that's being given to you. So cheerfulness very much, I feel, equates with lightness of mind. It's a little bit like, um, you know, I come up against a wall and the wall may only be this wide, but all I can see is the wall. And someone will say to me, just step up to the side and then go around. No, 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 this wall is too big. <laughs> So all you see are the problems and you don't see that there are solutions that are very, very possible with a little bit of cheerfulness. And, uh, you know, when you can't do something or something's not right and you say, well, or you've forgotten something or you make a mistake, then you'd be light with yourself and you'll say, okay, I'll do better next time. Okay, I've learned from that. Okay, let me move on but you won't stick there and you won't become heavy. So this personality of cheerfulness doesn't get stuck in the past at all because as soon as something's happened, it's become the past, right? And you're into a new present. And so you don't want to get stuck in that which happened even 10 minutes ago. So a cheerful personality, very beneficial in that way. And um, yes, when there's um, a cheerful personality, then people who are your, well, you can say turns enemies into friends. Um, but actually, I love um, the quote from Gandhiji, when he was asked, do you, um, what, what was he asked? 
do you consider your enemies as your friends? He said, oh, but I don't have any enemies. And I thought that was so beautiful. So only friends, when we have that cheerful disposition, not even to see someone as my enemy or see someone as my opponent, but to have that good vision for everyone that really is a cheerful person. And um, when you have good vision for someone, it helps them to believe in themselves. And I often feel the greatest gift you can give someone is to believe in them. And there's a very nice story I heard, and it was about a new school, newly qualified school teacher in Australia. And uh, she started her first job in this school. And um, she was given this class to manage. And actually, they were the worst class of the school. But they didn't say anything to her. They just gave her this class. And after a while, after a few weeks and months, um, these children that she was looking after, that were responsible for, began to achieve very well in their studies. And the head teacher called her and said, how come these children are, are doing so well? Um, and she said, well, they have very high IQ. And uh, the, teachers, the head teacher said, but they're the thickest class in the school. What do you mean a high IQ? And she said, I've got the numbers. He said, bring me, show me. And so, he brought, she brought the list um, of the children and these numbers, 100 and something, you know, all these high numbers. And she said, look, they have a high IQ, so why shouldn't they do well? And the head teacher looked at the list and said, they're not their IQ numbers, they're their locker numbers. <laughs> um, sorry, volume is low, little low. Can I... Help that one minute. No, volume is quite okay. Okay, it's, somebody it's, said volume is low. Okay. Anu, sister, is is it okay? Uh, anu and Pooja, sisters, I think it's quite okay for me as well. It's quite, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, quite yeah, okay. okay. If you put your volume up a little, yeah. Okay. Um. Yes. Yeah, so, so this they're the locker numbers, and the point is that she saw that and she believed in them. And that made them achieve. And so I always feel that, that when, okay, that when, um, you know, you believe in someone, they rise to that. And that's the biggest gift you can give anybody is to believe in them. So cheerfulness goes a very, very long way. And cheerfulness is something that um, isn't superficial. If it's superficial, you'll know those people who come to you and they smile, and, but the vibe you get is very different. You know that they're not really liking you, but they just feel they need to smile and be nice to you. <laughs> it's not very pleasant, is it? I think we've all experienced that, um, where people just you know, are nice to you for the sake of it. Um, and so real cheerfulness, and that's not going to be uplifting for anybody. So real cheerfulness is something that has been talked about and Sister Jenny talked about, is something that really, really comes from the inside. And it's something that is not based on the external factors, because as we said just at the start, seeing the conditions in the world and the uncertainty, if my cheerfulness was to be based on external things, well, I'd constantly be miserable <laughs> because everything is so uncertain and difficult. But where my cheerfulness is based on what's happening inside of me, then it's something that can be more in my control and something that can be then more constant. 
it won't fluctuate according to the circumstances around me. Or even if it does, we'll be able to put ourselves right quite quickly. And um, being cheerful on the inside indicates that I know and value myself and I believe in myself. And I love myself. And, uh, you know, what do we value more than anything? It really is the being that we are. And of course, I think all of you know that and have been, you know, understood that the soul is the being, the body is the costume. And yes, I use this costume. The costume will be, will be of all different shapes and sizes. That's for sure. All different colors, all different. And of course, today, um, the whole thing of racism is coming up very, very strongly. Certainly US, Europe, and I know in other places too. Um, when somebody is different, then are they pushed to one side? Are they... Um, are they treated in a suspicious way? And, you know, if all our souls, then we are all brothers, we are all sisters. Um, so anyway, uh, that would be a big subject in itself, wouldn't it? But the sorrow that is caused by responding to somebody on the basis of the external, of what they look like, or what culture they come from, or what religion they come from. There's a huge amount of sorrow that is caused by that. And putting people into boxes and into pigeonholes. And in fact, um, you know, even in anthropological terms, there is only one human race. There's not different, we use the term races, but there's actually only one race. There may be different ethnicities, but there's only one race because we can connect with each other and marry each other and, you know, produce children and all of that. You can't do that if you're a different species. We're all the same species. Um, and so everybody has a right to be treated with that human dignity. But you can only do that for others when you value yourself, when you have a sense of self-respect and you have that deep understanding of being a soul, not being the body, not being the labels of culture, religion, whatever it is, gender, um, so many labels that we carry around with ourselves and if you think about carrying labels, you become heavy. Um, Brahma Baba, the founder of the Brahma Kumaris, he didn't have any time for labels. He taught everyone to be soul conscious. And he demonstrated this in, in a variety of ways. But when, um, of course, the organization first started, it was largely um, women who had come with Brahma Baba into the community, not totally, but um, two thirds at least were women. And uh, Baba had that vision that women could become spiritual leaders and teachers. And in the 1930s in India, nobody had that vision for women at that time. And even today, we know the conditions, not just in India, other countries too, of female infanticide and so on, but we don't want to go into all of that. Um, but there's discrimination on the basis of gender everywhere in the world, with, without an ex exception. And, um, but he said to them, don't think of yourself as women. Think of yourself as souls. And in this way, he empowered them. 
And uh, what's amazing, the women used to drive the vehicles. Um, I remember one of the daddies, most of our daddies have gone now, just one daddy is left, daddy means elder sister. And one of the daddies, um, she told me how she used to, they used to go under the bus to do the, to fix the bus, you know, they were the mechanics, you know. And even today in London, it's not that many women bus drivers. Um, I, I'm always very happy when I see women in those roles which are outside of the stereotype. And um, I didn't know until fairly recently that Air India has a lot of women pilots on in, and on International Women's Day, they fly with all female crews. So the pilot, the co-pilot, the you know, stewards and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, I remember it, I remember on one flight to India, you know how the captain comes out usually halfway through the flight and looks. And I saw this woman very tall and obviously very dignified. And I, I thought she was the captain. So I asked her, are you the captain of the flight? She said, yes. I said, that's wonderful. And she told me that she'd been flying with Air India for 30 years. So it's, that's a wonderful thing. Um, but, but yes, um, uh, coming out of those stereotypes so that we're not bogged down, we're not heavy. And um, this comes to really valuing myself as a soul. And then I say, there are no limits as to what I can do. And, you know, um, being cheerful, part of being cheerful is I feel freeing myself of those labels and those conditionings. Oh dear, people really can't hear very well. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> actually it's their device problems because I think we are quite fine. We can hear it clearly. Oh dear, okay. I just check. I'm sure this is on, the microphone is on. No, 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 it's perfect. Don't worry. All yeah. right. Um, okay, where was I? Yes, so being cheerful is often, as I say, about... Um, clearing out these conditionings that we have from the moment we're born, where, you know, introduced to who we are on an external level. And so as I become more and more aware of the soul itself, that I am a soul, as I become more and more aware of the qualities I have, my original qualities of peace, of love, of purity, of wisdom, of light, of strength. As I become more and more aware, then the lighter I become. Because I now know I'm secure in myself, that I have my inner resources to fall back on at any moment. In fact, I'm using my inner resources at every moment moment and this gives me tremendous inner strength to stay light even in the face of adversity and we all face challenges all the time but can I stay light by knowing who I am in the midst of all those challenges because why the challenges uh, uh, make me suffer or, or make me doubt myself is because I start to believe that the challenges are real and they don't, well, they are real. I don't mean that they're not real, but I start to believe that these are things that are very difficult and I can't get over. And if I believe that, then they'll always be difficult. But when I know that with my inner resources, with my inner wisdom, there is a way out of the challenges, then it's like, um, you know, they say when there's a, a ship and there's a storm that the captain has to steer the ship into the eye of the storm, the center of the storm. And in the eye of the storm, there is calm and the ship 
will be safe. And it's a bit like that, that the challenges are there. But because I know who I am, because I have that self-respect and self-dignity, because I'm aware of my inner qualities guiding me, it's like I'm in the eye of the storm and there's calm and I can use my wisdom and I can use my inner strength to find a solution, to find a way out, to help and support others. And this is part of cheerfulness because inner happiness, that is one of my natural qualities. And when there's inner happiness, then I naturally, what's going to show on my face? My face, I'm going to smile. My eyes are going to smile. Everything's going to smile. You don't just smile with your lips. And we've all had to wear face masks, but still, you look at someone's eyes and you can tell if they're smiling. <laughs> and so we really need to go deep in order to be light. The deeper we go, the lighter we become. The more wisdom we have, the lighter we become. The more inner peace we have, the lighter we become. Um, the more inner strength we have, the lighter we become. The more love we have, the lighter we become. And you know, when you're with those souls who are very, very loving, they, they're just so light and so free. And the more and the, the more deeply I'm connected with God, the lighter I become. And, um, you know, there's, um, uh, it's interesting that lately um, I've been um, thinking about this concept of safety and uh, psychological safety. Um, it's, it's a, a it's a term that, that's used um, that people need psychological safety in the sense that I need to feel safe in the place where I'm living with the people that I'm mixing with in my workplace or wherever I am. Um, I need to feel safe that people, and I'm not in a sense defensive, that I'm, I'm fearful that someone's going to undermine me, someone's going to insult me. If I have that little bit of fear, then I'm not in a, a situation of safety. I may be physically safe, but am I psychologically safe? Am I mentally and emotionally safe? And sometimes you can't just get the safety from hoping other people will change their behavior or their attitude towards you. It's something that you have to do inside. And this has been my experience, that when I really am connected with myself, I'm so conscious, I'm connected with God, and I feel that God is there as my protector. Then because, as I think was mentioned last, I mentioned last time, we come into that mode of giving instead of taking. And this is the only way I've found that I can really, really feel safe in myself. And I think that's very, very important because people feel very unsafe. Um, I, I, you know, sometimes um, in the center, of course, people come to speak to you and they tell you of maybe their childhood, things they've been through. And when you hear about the things that people have been through um, where they haven't had that love and security growing up, they haven't felt safe. You begin to understand how they carry with them a, 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 la, a doubt of everyone. You know, it's like um, in their whole life, they have to fight for everything. And uh, they, they can't feel safe unless they are fighting for something. I, I've noticed this in a, a few people and uh, it's been very helpful to understand and to value them in such a way that will make them feel safe. 
Um, and that's really a very big thing to win someone's trust and to help them to feel safe. At least if they can feel safe in your presence, perhaps that will help them to feel safe inside and to feel safe with God. Of course, the biggest safety is the safety with God, the safety with the divine. Um, yeah, so all of that can make us heavy and we won't be cheerful. Um, another aspect of cheerfulness is, um, you know, a person who's cheerful is also optimistic, an optimist. And um, optimism comes from a couple of things. Um, optimism definitely comes from valuing the self because then I know there's something I can give, there's something I can do. When I'm a pessimist, if you see people who are pessimistic, the language they use is usually of, um, you know, lack. We say a deficit discourse. They will talk about things that they lack, but they will also speak in a way that they're telling you, I'm helpless. I don't know what to do. I'm helpless in this situation. It's helpless in the world, hopeless, helpless, you know, there's no possibility, there's no future. So that pessimism, of course, makes a person very heavy and even depressed inside. But where there's optimism, there is that, that sense of who you are. There's a sense that you can contribute something and give something to make a situation better or more you know, or help to uplift others or to use your wisdom. But also I feel optimism comes from having a sense of purpose. And when I understand myself, then I can understand better, not just I'm a soul, but what kind of soul am I? Daddy Janki would say this. She'd say, yes, I'm a soul, but what kind of soul am I? And so I then can recognize my speciality, my virtue, and what I can uniquely bring and give to the world. And we're all different, and we all bring very unique gifts to the world. And so when I recognize the gift I can give to the world, then I begin to get a sense of purpose. And then what happens is that an opportunity to use that gift, or maybe more, several gifts, opens, opens up in front of me. An opportunity to serve using those gifts opens up in front of me. And so my sense of purpose increases, and I also become more and more optimistic. Um, but where I don't recognize my gifts, then those opportunities don't come in front of me. Um, and this is where, and then I can feel hopeless or helpless. And this is where we really understand this principle that I create my world, actually. Um, and that's incredible. And the more, and we have the saying in the Brahma Kumaris, when I change, the world changes. And it's true, not just my own world changes, but the wider world changes. And we have, uh, and, um, you know, the more, again, I have that deeper and deeper connection with God, then the more I'm filled, not just with qualities, but divine qualities. So those qualities, there's a difference between human qualities and divine qualities, or human virtues and divine virtues. So human virtues virtues that I have and I use, but they can, um, what's the word, they can deplete over time. If somebody attacks me and doesn't like my virtues or is jealous of me, that's actually the way it happens, it can pull me down. But where we have divine virtues, divine virtues, they are my own virtues, but they are powered by my connection with God, not dependent on the outside at all, but they're dependent on being empowered by 
what it is that God is giving me, the strength that God is giving me. And so those virtues become divine virtues. And so my cheerfulness becomes a divine cheerfulness based on those divine virtues. And so, yes, this whole subject of cheerfulness, it's not just about smiling or looking happy. It really is a very deep subject of what you need to do from the inside to bring that attitude of mind of being cheerful, of seeing good, of seeing the best, of seeing solutions. And I remember something that, excuse me, one of our elder sisters, Daddy Gulzar said, and I love that, she said, <clears throat> there isn't a problem for which the soul itself doesn't have a solution. And so if I understand divine wisdom, there is a solution, there is something I can do. And I think the world today needs a lot of cheerfulness. Um, in the UK, we're preparing for the big climate change conference that's going to be happening in Glasgow in, in Scotland. And um, there's a lot of pessimism around. But what is interesting is that when um, I interact with the faith communities who are working towards climate change, I find a lot of optimism. And that made me think, it's because of faith. It's because of a belief in God and understanding of God, because there's something more that's empowering those people, um, you know, and their faith is very strong. And so that's interesting. And so faith and optimism, before I hadn't really made that connection, but there definitely is a connection. So let us really think about this, what cheerfulness really means and how is it that I can really uplift any gathering, any group of people, anywhere where I am. It's really, really important and it really, really is a need, not just for myself, but for others around me and for the whole world at this time. Okay, maybe I'll stop there and Kate, see if there are any questions or comments. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. I have a question. <laughs> I was actually wondering, uh, it's, um, it's an interesting question. One way I feel it's interesting. You have spent 40 years or more than that with Dadi Janki. And mm -hmm. also you have been, uh, you have seen Dadi Gulzar very closely and even Dadi Prakashmani, as you mentioned. So do you find there's a, I'm sure all of them are cheerful, no doubt about that. But do you find that there's a little bit of difference in the cheerfulness, the way they exhibit all these three? If you can just allude to Definitely, that. Definitely, yes. They're very different personalities. All of them, amazing. And um, I remember a situation where there was a group of us in, in a meeting room, those who go to Mother Ban Dadiji's meeting room, we were there with uh, all the dad, the, the three daddies were sitting there. Um, Daddy Gosar was in the middle, they were at the front. So Daddy Gosar was in the middle. And as I'm looking, and I can remember the scene so beautifully, and Daddy Janki was to my left and Daddy Prakashmani was to my right. And Daddy Prakashmani was, um, uh, she used to like to share all the things that are happening in Madhuban, our headquarters. And she'd share lots of household things and what people were doing. And, you know, there were lots of things she was sharing. And Daddy Janki, you know, she always likes to talk and very vivacious and, she, she kept interrupting her and, you know, it was kind of a funny scene going on. And, um, and they were, you know, talking away and then suddenly they just stopped. They were, I forget what they were talking about now in detail, but suddenly they both just stopped and turned to Daddy Gulzar in the middle, who'd been sitting very quietly and said, Gulzar, what do you think? And she said, oh, I wasn't thinking anything. I was just listening. <laughs> and I thought, 
it just brought home to me their personalities. I thought it was amazing. So there's Daddy Prakashmani, you know, wanting to share everything that's going on. She was so open, so transparent. Not that the others weren't, but it was really her quality. Daddy Janky always wanting to share wisdom, knowledge with us, coming in with that, so enthusiastic. And Daddy Gulzar, very, very quiet and introverted. And she didn't speak that much. And uh, she, she would stay quiet inside. When she did speak, amazing wisdom came out. But a very quiet personality. And uh, she never, and, and you know, Daddy Prakashmani, a fantastic administrator. Daddy Janki, not so much an administrator, but worked on inspiration in, all the time, divine inspiration. Daddy Gozar just gave a divine presence. So all cheerful in their own way. You look at any one of their faces and you smile because they're so beautiful, but their personality is very, very different. Thank you so much for clarifying that. And I'll just take one question uh, has, has come to me uh, because I have disabled the chat box that way for everyone because it was too disturbing that way. So uh, mm -hmm. the sister is asking that uh, Brahma Baba once mentioned that laughing out loud is also not being royal. And we <laughs> won't be like that in the golden age. So please comment on that, she's saying. <laughs> It's true, yes. And I remember also being picked up on that. One of our dadas, Dada Vishwaratan, again, a very introverted yogi individual. And I was in the courtyard in, in Mount Abu. And no, I was wherever I was, anyway, in one of the complexes. And I was laughing about something. And they told me, <laughs> don't laugh so loudly. <laughs> And, um, you know, while um, I definitely advocate having fun, <laughs> and I've seen the daddies laugh a lot, and it's fine to laugh, but I think where it comes in, um, it becomes a little bit uh, extrovert in a sense, um, is if we're laughing um, to impress someone, and that can happen, um, and we want to draw attention to ourselves. If we're laughing at the expense of somebody, that's very bad. So my laughter has to be a laughter that is uplifting. I come back to this. It isn't that we can't laugh, but a raw way of laughing is a way of laughing that uplifts. So yes, not to laugh too loudly or raucously because then it can be misinterpreted in different ways. Yeah. Uh, fine. Uh, I'll just take last question because there's a little bit of time. Uh, so Sister Pooja is asking, how is happiness distinct from cheerfulness? Okay. So happiness leads to cheerfulness. Cheerfulness is an expression of happiness. So happiness, your inner happiness. Happiness is inside, but you know someone's happy by their cheerfulness, right? Um, so somebody who's happy automatically is cheerful, automatically is uplifting. And that's the vibration that you always receive from them. And when you receive that vibration, you feel very good inside. So isn't it nice to think that by our inner happiness and our cheerfulness, we can help others to feel good inside themselves. I like that. Um, but happiness is um, really is an original quality of the soul. So it's like you have the original qualities, um, happiness, peace, love, purity, wisdom. These are like our core qualities that are eternal. And so yes, they get buried, and then they have to be awakened again but they are with us eternally. Then the expression of those qualities are in the divine virtues like respect, tolerance, cheerfulness, and so on. So very much um, cheerfulness is an expression of happiness. 
Okay, great. Thank you. And actually, Dr. Mehta, Ashok Mehta, he just uh, conveyed an apology for you that he's not able to join for some reason. He's got some logic commitment today, mm. Sunday morning here. Mm. So I would, I would propose the vote of thanks. <laughs> I would really like to thank you immensely for sharing your wisdom on the two talks, cheerful, on the two values, cheerfulness and responsibility. And uh, we will hope to again catch you up soon sometime later as well. So thank you once again. And before we uh, move on to the meditation, I'll just uh, take a few minutes to do the announcements so that then we leave in meditation mode. Uh, yeah, so continuing with the Values for Life series, as all of you are aware, it's a fortnightly uh, series and we are covering discipline this time. All of you know it's Didi Manmohini's month. 28 July 1983 was the day uh, she became Avyakt. So uh, very close to the day 28 July and none other than Asha Didi who itself is I mean she exudes that discipline in her uh, behavior and also in her dealings with everyone so and Didi Manmohini was also and I mean I must say an embodiment of discipline she had this beautiful balance of discipline with love so love and law she was an embodiment of that and again after that again we won't be leaving UK London so soon we have again sister Gopi with us uh, she's joining us after I think three four months now so she'll be sharing her experiences on discipline and that will be as usual the workshop. It's on a Saturday. We'll tell you all about the timings later. We are planning to change the times for a few episodes just to fit in more people from the West Coast of US and Canada. And this is our exotic calendar which we have. It is coming to you in the invitations as well. So 24th and 31st, the dates to mark your calendar. Uh, with this, I'll just stop sharing and uh, I just request uh, again Sister Maureen to take us in the meditation on cheerfulness. I take a pause. I stop. And withdraw my thoughts from all the external distractions. They go inside into my inner world. Into the world of the soul, the being. the true self. I am a soul, a being of light. I am light. And in this awareness, I'm free from all the labels, all the conditionings. I'm free to be my true self. And that true self, the soul, is filled with many qualities. Of peace, of love, of happiness. purity, wisdom,
knowing my inner qualities. I value and respect myself. And there's an inner calm, inner silence. And in this silence, I connect with the divine. with the Supreme Soul. The one who's always there for me. My eternal parent. My beloved. As I connect. I feel the flow of energy from God. Energy of love. Energy of strength and power. And I feel that I, the soul, I'm being awakened, awakened to the true reality of who I am and my true purpose in life. And as I wake into this, I know that that inner happiness will be expressed in many ways. I begin to live from the inside out, not from the outside in. I, the soul, I'm like a boat in the water of life. And the boat is in the water, but the water mustn't come in the boat and make me sink. I stay afloat, alert, optimistic, happy, and cheerful through everything I go through. Because I have the power of the divine. And so my virtues become divine. I become an instrument to uplift those around me and the world.
Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Maureen. And uh, thanks once again. Thank Shanti. you. Anu, Sister, you have to say something. Uh, we'll take a picture. There are so many new people. But thank you so much, Maureen, Sister. So purely we feel in the heart. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. You said divine virtue is based on the trust on God, the same virtues and qualities that is unshakable because it's in the faith, with the faith on God. Thank you so much. I wanted to just mention that. And I think there are so many new uh, people today. If you can all open up your videos, we can have this moment captured. And we request all of you to open up your videos. Hello, everyone. Everyone and Sister Maureen, you can also make it a uh, gallery view. Yes, if you are done. I'm looking. Nice to see everyone. I'm Shanti. Um, with Sister, but I haven't taken the picture. So. Today should be the real cheerfulness from our heart. So let's try that. One, two, and three. Hold on. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for so inviting much. me to be with you. Yeah. Thank you, Manojpa. Okay. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you.